job in the studio today is to work out how I'm going to quilt this new quilt here on the design wall. So this is the new pattern I'm releasing and it's actually quite complicated to piece. It's actually more probably more complicated than it looks which is great for those of you who are up for a bigger challenge than the previous quilts. But there's also a fair bit of background in here so I'm kind of deciding between well I've got three options I can do it on my domestic machine or I can do it on my long arm machine or I can hand quilt it so usually what I do in all my quilts is I stitch along all the same lines and what well, I call it ditch stitching stitch it so I'll stitch around every leaf and every branch and then I go back and fill in the background with whatever I like sometimes it's text sometimes it's um stuck in a quilt like this it might be eucalyptus blossoms or it just could just be some kind of fill-in pattern um, but the other option I've often been doing lately is after I've ditch stitched going in and just doing lots of um hand quilting like almost it's not echo quilting but it kind of reminds me of sashiko stitching um, and I really enjoy that but I'm kind of torn between because I want to get this finished so that I can photograph it and release the pattern for you all versus the hand stitching, which might take a little bit longer, but will be very enjoyable. If I'm going to be hand stitching it, I won't add batting in because I just love working with the two layers of fabric without the batting. Whereas if I'm going to machine quilt it, I'll probably add batting to this one to give it the extra dimension um, with the quilting. So that's today's decision i don't know what would you do so one thing i'm trying to keep in mind as i'm looking at that this quilt and deciding what to do is that the actual quilt stops about there i suppose there's a bit of extra fabric on the edges so that actually makes quite a big difference as to how much fabric how much of the background fabric needs to be quilted as i'm looking at it now i'm kind of thinking i would just love to do that hand stitching into the background because it'll it'll kind of um, mirror or add to the sense of movement among the leaves because it really looks like leaves rustling in the wind and I think we can do some nice swirly shapes with that hand stitching um, and add in the fact that it's just so therapeutic to sit down in the lounge at night with my hand stitching. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to layer it but I'm only going to do backing fabric and the quilt top and I'm not going to add the batting um, and then I'm going to ditch stitch it to hold it all securely in place and then I'm going to do the hand stitching and it's just too bad if it takes a little bit longer to get this quilt pattern ready for release so let's see how we go with that so what I'm doing here is laying out the backing fabric onto my cutting table if the quilt's small enough, I always prefer, prefer to layer it at the table rather than on the floor for obvious reasons. So I like these clamps for stretching out the fabric um, nice and taut across the table. And then what I'll do next is lay the quilt over top, um, flatten it out with my hands as much as possible and pin the layers of the quilt together with safety pins. layered and pinned together with lots of safety pins and now I'm going to start the ditch stitching and I'm doing it on my domestic machine just because I'm still not as comfortable doing this on the long arm quilter as I would like. Ideally I would do it on the long arm quilter because it's just um, I do think it's better for my body to be standing um, and just moving the machine rather than moving the quilt through the machine but for this one I'm just not 
Um, I, I just rather do it on the domestic machine. I'm much more comfortable on that machine for this process. So first up, I'm going to load up a bunch of bobbins with my um, backing fabric colour, light grey, and then I'm going to make a start. Okay, so I've got my nice bright pink thread. I'm not sure if you can see that. And I'm going to start with the boldest, brightest fabric on the quilt. Maybe not such a good idea, but that's what I'm doing. And for this process, I'm using my free motion foot. Let's see how we go. It's, there we are. It's a like an embroidery loop, but it's open at the front, which gives me good visibility. visibility. I can see what I'm doing. So I'll pop that one on and drop my feed dogs down on the side of the machine so that my fabric can move freely in all directions. And I'm just going to get started. I'm going to stitch around every pink piece on the quilt. I drop the needle in and pull the needle out so I can bring up the bobbin thread. And then I'm ready to go, except that I've got the wrong glasses on. So I need to go and switch those out. So it's just as well I had to swap my glasses because I had brownies in the oven, which I had nearly forgotten about. They're all good. I got them out just on time. Now it's a matter of just stitching along the seam lines. And at the end of every line of stitching, I pull up the bobbin thread so we don't get a tangled mess on the back of the quilt. And I'll tidy them up nicely later. One thing I always do when I, when I start quilting is I forget to adjust the tension. So on my machine, I need to adjust the top thread tension way down. Otherwise I find that the bobbin thread, the bottom thread shows up on the top. For some reason that's the thing when I'm free motion stitching that my machine does. Maybe all machines do it, I'm not sure. My default top thread tension is five and I'm bringing it down to about two or two, two and a quarter. Okay, so that was about half an hour of ditch stitching and I've just finished the first colour. ditch stitching is completed and it's a B to tie off these thread ends and bury them between the layers of the quilt that gives a nice tidy finish. So what I'm doing here is each pair of thread so that's the top thread and the bottom thread at the beginning and the end of each line of stitching each pair of thread gets knotted as a like in a granny knot and then I trim them so that they're so that they're the same length and then it gets threaded onto the needle and then I go back into the last hole where the needle went through the sewing machine needle and then thread the threads between the two layers of fabric and then snip off the end. This just gives a really tidy finish to the quilting. So as I said earlier I've decided to go with the hand quilting for this quilt. So I've done the ditch stitching by machine and I've buried all the threads and then I go back into the quilt with lots of um, hand quilting. And I, I love to use a thicker weight thread for this than your regular sewing cotton. So what I'm using is from the Wonderfill uh, Fruity Collection and it's Egyptian cotton 12 weight. What I haven't captured on video, but what I like to do when I'm using this process of hand quilting kind of swirls in the background is I'll actually just very lightly mark a few swirls onto the quilt with a um, Crayola colour pencil. I will use a colour that's not too dark, but that I can see. I think I used orange in this case. Just lightly enough so that I can just see it, but that it's not obvious once it's covered with the stitching. And then I follow that curve 
with multiple lines of stitching. All the quilting is completed and it's time to finish off the quilt. I don't tend to use binding on my quilts. I prefer to use a um, hidden facing process or in the case of these quilts where it's just the top layer and a very thin backing fabric, I'll actually just hem it um, rather than adding an extra facing. So the way I've done that here is I've turned under a three centimetre edge all the way around and then of that three centimeter edge I've turned under another centimeter so you get basically get a two centimeter hem and then I'm going to slip stitch that all the way around and um, that gives quite a nice tidy finish on the quilt. 